two of the Celestial Invitational. I'm D2. With me is Monk. We're bringing you the English cast, piggybacking on the Chinese cast. Thanks again to Temple Storm for allowing us to broadcast on their channel and bring this to as many viewers as possible. Uh, we just saw Surrender take out Eloise, or not take out, uh, defeat Eloise three games to one. She's not out of the tournament yet, uh, which brings Surrender and Eloise both to one game apiece in the win and loss column. Next we have Jayshaw versus Fualiver. Uh, Fualiver right now at 0-1 and Jayshaw at 1-0. These are two Chinese qualifiers for the tournament and uh, they're bringing Hunter, Paladin, and Shaman for Fualiver and Druid, Hunter, and Rogue for Jayshaw. Right, two of the players that uh, we don't know as much about. Fualiver, obviously the more known player with Yellow Miracle, kind of a prominent team in the Chinese scene. And also, uh, it's a team that won the NEL two times. For those of you who don't know, the NEL is a team tournament, uh, the most prominent team tournament in China, kind of like the Archon League of the West. And we're seeing his two decks right now. It looks to be a really interesting Mech Shaman, um, kind of like a mid-range Paladin um, with secrets. So a mid-range Secret Paladin and uh, Face Hunter, good old Face Hunter. Yep, so yeah, that Secret Paladin, the uh, Face Hunter, and the... Uh, that Shaman there. The Shaman, uh, basically, it looks like he has one Azure Drake, but otherwise it tops out at three. Uh, obviously, you're having a Doomhammer in there as uh, necessities for taking out your opponent. We are going to have that Tunnel Truck in there, unlike uh, his uh, counterpart, Jayshaw, who did not have it in his Shaman deck. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how these aggressive decks work. Basically, the slowest deck in his lineup is going to be that Secret Paladin, which is uh, pretty comical if you think about it. And uh, yeah, lots. We're going to be have, having fast matches. This is pretty typical of the uh, Chinese meta. A lot of decks that they like to play um, are a bit faster, like the um, like the Face Hunter, like the Shaman. Although pretty much everyone has brought uh, a faster Shaman, except for who was it? Blue yesterday, who had a Control Shaman. Yeah, definitely had an interesting deck to see from him. Control Shaman with uh, two Jeweled Scarabs, with uh, Neptalon, even with the Asera in it. So. Um, a little unfortunate that players are not as creative as him, although Fulliver's Shaman is probably the second most creative Shaman deck I've seen. It has just so many one ofs, which leads me to believe maybe it's a little less consistent, but I'm still excited to see it. Yeah, definitely. As we see, as we take a look at Jay Shaw from Team Celestial uh, on the screen right there. And um, yeah, so yeah, we're going to take a look at, his, at Jay Shaw's decks right now. And that's going to be the Druid on the left, which is looks like it's going to be a standard mid-range Druid uh, with one Darnassus, one Kazan, and one Sylvanas uh, for his Hunter. Looks like it's uh, a Face Hunter with the uh, Argent Horse Riders. And lastly, the Rogue, which looks like a fairly standard Rogue with one Healbot and one Big Game Hunter. So, yeah, what do you think about that? Uh, very standard decks. Um, for Face Hunter, it looks like he has the Argent Horse Riders, whereas Fulliver does not. So, uh, oftentimes in Face Hunter, it's going to be about board control, even though it's there's two face decks. What usually happens is two face decks usually battle for board control. So, I think the or Argent Horse Riders will help with that. On the other hand, though, there's a flare in Fulliver's deck. So, uh, again, that might be just be the key difference. Flare and Explosive Trap in the Face Hunter mirror is so huge. Yeah, Flare, obviously, it's a double-edged sword, though, because, I mean, it can be so good if you get rid of a trap and draw a card, but at the same time, it can be so bad when it's completely stuck in your hand uh, as a dead card against, you know, maybe, a, maybe a, a deck that doesn't have traps in it, or secrets in it, excuse me, or... You know, even if you even if your opponent has these secrets in it, sometimes it can just be something that you never get to use. So, uh, all that aside, we're going to be having our first game, as you can see on the screen there, for Oliver with his aggressive shaman versus the obviously aggressive uh, face hunter from. Jay Shaw there. No one drop though, unfortunately for him, which uh, could give Fu Oliver the opening to start taking the lead here. Right, it's uh, really key to curve out consistently well, especially if you're a face hunter. Um, that one drop over the course of a few turns can put in so much damage. Uh, not only that, but because uh, Jay Shaw doesn't have a one drop, it allows Fulliver to actually just go for the Whirling Zapomatic, Whirling Zapomatic, which will force Jay Shaw to use Quick Shot um, yeah. on his turn too. So just no matter what, Fulliver will get the uh, tempo advantage throughout the rest of the game. 
Yeah, definitely. The only problem with this playing is that, say, uh, j Shaw plays the Night Juggler here, Fualiver, uh might have to float a mana just to play the uh, Rock Biter to take it out. Um, I was thinking maybe he could have gone for the Totem Golem and, you know, maybe take out whatever comes out from j Shaw with that Rock Biter. But if it's something like a Haunted Creeper, obviously, not something you can take out so easily. Uh, looks like instead Jaysha doesn't want to be taking huge amounts of damage anytime soon, so I'm going to just take it out with the uh, Quick Shot rather than play the Knife Juggler. Um, at least Ooh. in pre. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> that, he just saved himself 18 damage. Right. <laughs> oh my god. Good, good decision there from Jay Shaw. Uh, at least in pre uh, TGT, Hunter was hugely favored against Mech Shaman. Um, but now it's probably a little bit different, I want to say, just because of Tunnel Trog, it can get so much damage in. And also, um, I would say in the vast majority of cases, the uh, turn one play is pretty gonna be huge for the hunter, and Jay Shaw is already at a disadvantage. Although with this um, with this Misha, it's actually the best draw for him, yeah, or, or the best animal companion by f so much. Usually Misha, it's sometimes it's the worst one because well, yeah, no, sometimes like Leoc gets you extra damage. Sometimes Huffer always gets you extra damage actually. Um, but Misha, in kind of like a board control mirror, it's going to be really good. Yeah, in, uh, if you're fighting for the board, Misha is by far the best early game. Late game, you typically want the damage, whether it be uh, Leoc or the Huffer. Uh, if you're really wanting to push the damage and your opponent is playing a class that's limited in removal, uh, like, for instance, you don't really want to get Huffer sometimes against Druid because they just keep her down. Um, so it really depends. But a lot of the time, you're really happy with Misha early game. Right, and it's kind of funny here that it's two face decks, and on turn four, both of them are at full health. Although um, that might change. Uh, no, not, just not, go not for a second turn, quick yeah. shot. <laughs> not this turn, yeah. Um, so one thing to keep in mind here is that obviously the uh, Mech Shaman did not do well against the Face Hunter at all. But this is a a bit of a different deck, uh, more aggressive. I don't actually. How many Mechs are even in Fuelver's deck? It could be a straight aggro deck, a la uh, Luffy. Right, so this deck, yeah, you're right, it actually doesn't really have any mechs at all. Yeah, so that's the difference. Um, basically, a lot, the problems with the mech was that, or the mechs, excuse me, were that they were so easily killed. Uh, they trade, I mean, for instance, uh, the Whirling Zappomatic just trades horribly right. into every single 2-1. Well, uh, well, the, the Whirling Zappomatics were in this deck, but other than that, there were, there's no like Mech Warper, there's no Cogmaster. Yeah. Uh, instead, there's cards like Tuskar Totemix, cards like Flame Tongue Totem, and it's more of just a, an Overload-based deck rather than a mech-based deck. Right. So that's that basically um, our, our long way of saying that this uh, this deck is a little bit different. So uh, Fualiver has a better chance of winning this matchup than he would have had it been, you know, a different deck. But, um, or I mean, had it been the the uh, Mech Shaman, excuse me. A uh, bit more explosive, this deck, uh, I, I feel... Uh, well, kind of. It's basically it's it's able to be more annoying considering it has more health overall uh, with that tunnel truck starting out, and uh, also has the Tuscar Totemic, which you don't often see at all with this sort of deck. All right, so what's the play here? It's quite interesting because Knife Juggler Unleash is typically one of the best tools you have um, in a in a matchup where board control is king. And also one of the best comeback cards. Um, but you don't necessarily want to use either of those this turn. Like if you just play the Knife Juggler here and clear off the Wolf, it feels like if it gets cleared, then you might be in a bit of trouble. Um, it's kind of like a tool that you have that you're not using for full value. So I can definitely see this kind of play where he just hero powers and passes. Yeah, hero powers and passes, which means he... I mean, it should set off alarm bells in Full Oliver's head, uh, knowing that there could be something like Knife Juggler and Leash in hand that he doesn't want to use at the moment. Um, even not even using his bow to clear it up. So, what does Full Oliver do here? I mean, it just... No matter what he does, unless he just lava bursts the face, everything he does, you know, develops the board and allows Jaysoft to have a better um, Knife Juggler and Leash, so... Uh, pretty tough turn, honestly, for Fu Oliver. And uh, no matter what he does, he could be seeing his board get cleared next turn. Right. So from Fu Oliver's perspective, if you think from his perspective, my opponent has three cards in his hand. What could those be that I, he wouldn't play them? And if you think about the Face Hunter cards, you'd probably play all the Chargers. You played Mad Scientist. Um, maybe you wouldn't play Owl. Maybe you wouldn't kill, uh, play Kill Command. But other than that, it's it's you're hard pressed to think of anything else. Yeah. So uh, Fu Oliver. 
does play around it a bit, the Knife Juggler Unleash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good read by him in the end, able to... Uh able to predict that that was the card, or those were the cards, excuse me, in Jay Shah's hand. Uh, doesn't even hero power, doesn't play the Thalnos or anything like that. That's basically an extra knife and an extra doggy that he has to deal with. Uh, good thing for Jay Shah, though, however, is that he doesn't even need to do the Knife Juggler Unleashed this turn. He has the Explosive Trap, which is uh, arguably just as effective. Yeah, uh, oftentimes, like we've mentioned, uh, in... In matchups where it's like a board control deck versus a face deck, the board control deck uh, very often has advantage because it has more board control tools. Uh, just one of the reasons why Hunter was favored against Mech Shaman is that uh, Unleash the Hounds, especially with Knife Juggler, took control of the board so convincingly that the Mech Shaman just had no recourse against it. Similar to that with uh, Explosive Trap, what does the Shaman even do here? Meanwhile, the Shaman, um, if it ever loses board control itself, it basically has no AoE, so nothing really going on there. Yeah, exactly. So we're over in a really horrible spot here because he can't just pass. Uh, I mean, Hunter eventually wins that game, right? You can Hunter can just keep hero powering you uh, until you die, and uh, like looks like he's going to set off this explosive trap, but it's going to be tougher him regardless uh, because everything in his hand is just minions. And um, I mean, he can play this totem golem, can play this tuskar totemic, but. Uh, knows that the Night Juggler uh, unleashed in hand, so I mean, it might just be Tus uh, Totem Golden Pass L hovering over that Blood Mage Thanos decides against it, and um, again, pretty tough decision for him. Yeah, he's just he's basically trying to force his opponent to make awkward trades um, or just play awkwardly because n now he's kind of like if there's a hero power pass again, he's pretty much convinced that what, uh, what his opponent has. Um, so I think he's going to be committed to just basically not playing minions, possibly for the rest of the game. And his best bet here is to top deck Doomhammer, basically. Because the way it's going right now, um, it looks like Jay Shaw is probably going to do more damage per turn than Fallover can with just the Totem Golem. Three damage versus um, charge minions that can come every turn and the bow, uh, in addition to the hero power from Jay Shaw, is just uh, going to be really Ooh. good for racing. Well, speaking of racing, that's a huge pickup for him. Uh, like you said, Jay Shaw had the better racing potential, uh, being able to use his hero power and obviously the uh, the weapon that he has. But now, if Oliver's weapon is vastly superior, Jay Shaw's only going to have one more charge out of that, uh, most likely. So, if Oliver doesn't really need to even play anything. And up until that point, I was thinking maybe his best option was to just eat the the uh, Knife Juggler Unleash and just kind of deal with it and then go from there, right? Maybe repopulate the board afterward. But uh, now that he's picked the Doomhammer, he's in a much better spot than before. Ooh. Arcane Golem. Let's see. How much damage is it? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 damage. So 2 off lethal. Does he have... Yeah, he does have the mana for all of that, right? With the kill command as well, so... Um, I mean, what if you just go for it? Uh, like, is the extra mana going to allow your opponent to kill you? Mo most likely not, so I think you just go for it as Jayshaw here. Um, is there a way to clear this Totem Golem and also set up for lethal? I think if that were possible, uh, it's probably the best play. Well, the easiest way to deal with it would be that Kill Command, otherwise you're throwing an Arcane Golem into it, which I, I'm certain wouldn't really prepare for lethal. Um, I mean, I guess you could go knife juggler unleash. Hope one the juggler or the juggle hits the guy, and then you can use your abusive, and then from there, uh, you can play the arcane golem the following turn. Uh, but yeah, it looks like he's just gonna go for this, and yeah, even even the kill command, knowing that his opponent most likely doesn't have uh Lothab. Fallover, what does he need here? Needs a rock biter? I, a rock biter wouldn't even be enough, would it? Well, I think one of the reasons Jay Shaw went for that line of play is because both rock biters were used in the early game. Oh, right. I'm, yeah, sorry about that. So um, basically, he would need a miracle here. Yeah, he, he needs, needs exact. Vitality he needs totem, right? Vitality Totem, but even that probably wouldn't do anything. Especially with, with the Night Dragon Unleashed Dragon. coming up, yeah. So that's going to be it for Oliver is going to concede, and Jay Shaw is going to take game number one with his hunter versus the uh, versus that shaman. More or less expected result, uh, despite shaman being pretty good lately. It's kind of hard to 
uh, compete with the tried and true face hunter. Uh, remaining for Jay Shaw are the Druid and the Rogue, whereas Fwalver has to win with the Hunter, Paladin, and Shaman. I want to remind you guys that every game matters in this. Uh, after, obviously, with only four players, there could be a lot of uh, ties, you know, obviously 2-1 or 1-2. And uh, to break those ties, we go by game score difference. So every game matters, and they want to win every single game going forward. So uh, obviously don't want to be following too behind in this situation. Yeah, so Fwalver queues up again with the Mech Shaman, and... Uh, or rather the aggro-ish kind of shaman. Um, but unfortunately, I want to point out that even though the aggro shaman slash mech shaman has been really hyped up in the last few days, it really hasn't performed uh, well at all in this league. It has an insanely negative record with everyone at least um, losing one game before uh, it can get onto the board. Yeah, it could be the, a situation where these players are just really good and they're able to kind of counter it. Uh, just with good play, whereas on ladder, uh, it's had most of its success on ladder, right? Uh, Reyna being able to uh, pilot to a top five on the NA ladder, as well as, you know, Luffy, and the people who net deck Luffy, people like Ant, uh, and uh, another player who I'm forgetting right now, uh, who got to the top of the ladder on NA with it. But it could be, you know, just that these players, these strong pro players and uh, qualifiers are just stronger than your, than your ladder players and are able to just deal with it much more effectively. Yeah, you also have to remember that right when Rain, players like Raynad and Luffy got top rank legends with the deck, it was more of a new deck. Like, they were the innovators, so no one had ever seen that deck before. So their opponent may have been a little more clueless on uh, exactly what to play around. Yeah, exactly. So Jay Shaw went for the backstab there to mitigate the damage from that Leper Gnome, but he's going to regret it here. Um, well, I guess he's already regretting it now that he's seeing it, but no way to deal with this other than Sap. But if he Sap it, it comes right back onto the board. Obviously, Fu Oliver will be able to have the two mana the following turn. Unfortunately for Fu Oliver, after... Well, okay, this ends up working out for Fu Oliver. Can get this on the board the following turn. Uh, but if not for that, then he wouldn't have anything really to do other than... Uh, use the totem. Oh, never mind. Just kidding. Would have been re really good for him with the uh, top deck totem golem. But uh, yeah, this is a this is a good matchup for the oil rogue just because it has so many answers to kind of neutralize uh, all the minions that come on the board for shaman. Typically, shaman really relies on its minions to stick to the board for a couple turns, get the damage in, so that its burst spells can finish out the game. But uh, rogue obviously able to neutralize those right at the beginning before they take any damage. Yeah, uh, now, now that I look at his deck list, though, I think actually Totem Golem is the best target in his entire deck to sap, with the one exception of the one of Azure Drake in this deck. Right, yeah, definitely. And, I mean, it costs three mana, essentially, and you're able to... or And um, it's really big, obviously, so it makes sense for uh, Jayshaw to sap that back, especially with no other options in hand. Um, puts the Pilot Treader on the board rather than the Valid Teacher just because it can test it right away. Uh, Fwalver has a lot of options here, actually. Um, he can go Rockbiter, uh, Totem Golem, he can go, uh, with the Feral Spirit and just get something in the way so he can start hitting the face. He can go for, uh, the Tuscar Totem. It looks like he's gonna, uh, decide to clear this off and, uh, favor board control. Yeah. A risky proposition, though. Oh, it's a little unfortunate. Yeah, you saw him um, shake his head a bit there. He's kind of, and I was wondering what uh, bad minion came up. Not, not too bad. Not like a uh, mill house or anything. Yeah. Uh, the problem with going board control in this kind of matchup is the rogue is always going to be better uh, at board control. So you kind of have to uh, play it like halfway. Like at some point, you're going to have to turn on the aggression switch and go all for face. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, these 3-4 golems are pretty annoying for a rogue to deal with, so maybe it feels like if I start controlling the board now, it will lead to more damage down the road, and uh, could potentially pay off. Uh, and like he said, it could be time for Fuelver to start putting on that aggression. Um, one play that could uh, start helping him out toward that end would be the Tunnel Trog into the Feral Spirit and just hit 6 damage to face right now. Hope your opponent doesn't have that Blade Flurry. Yeah, and one other thing about maybe his decision to go more of the um, the board control route is that he ha he has a like a more sustainable deck. He has four card draws in his deck: the uh, two ancestral knowledge, the one Azure Drake, and the one Blood Mage Thanos. So he he can actually like do pretty well in the um, in the long term game. 
And we're seeing right now, he actually is doing pretty well. He might be afraid of a big blade flurry, but unfortunately for Jay Shaw, he doesn't have a deadly poison to go with that. Yeah, even if there were a deadly poison, he would have to sacrifice his uh, Gilblen Stalker and uh, throw in most of his uh, Valet Teacher as well. And he wouldn't be able to swing with the first part. As it stands, Jay Shaw without that deadly poison, I mean, I say that wouldn't be the greatest, but it would be the best thing for Jay Shaw right here. As it stands, he doesn't really have much to do. He can uh, fan of knives and clear part of this board. Um, he can just heal bot and prepare for future turns by using fan and uh, uh, his SI next turn. But uh, yeah, everything's just kind of awkward here. Looks like he's just going to set up for the future. Playing this heal bot, I like to think of it as kind of like an Azure Drake in a way because it buys you time for the future. So it's kind of like drawing a card in a way. Yeah. Unfortunately for Jay Shaw, though, this means because he didn't get to fit a dagger in, he won't be able to get a big, big blade flurry clear on the next turn unless he draws preparation. Um, but still, I like this kind of play um, going for the heal bot here because it gives his, it gives him more time. If Fallover goes for more of the trading route like he has been lately, um, then he's going to be, um, he's, he's basically setting himself up for his opponent's Blade Flurry. Right. Um, but right now, Fuelver can kind of guess that the Blade Flurry isn't in hand, or at least not the necessary pieces, because that would have been a really good uh, play last turn. So maybe he might commit to the Whirling Zapomatic as something to just kind of be a little bit, a bit of a distraction. Um, didn't get the spell damage on him, so won't able to, able to uh, clear anything off with the uh, Lava Shock. Though, he could still use it, uh, because it's kind of free. If he plays it, he can get the Whirling Zapomatic out anyway. Um, he's trading his Tunnel Truck, interestingly enough. And uh, looks like he's going to be just trading all the way, just to make sure that his Whirling Zapomatic gets on the field. Uh, ooh, that is... Oh. Wow. Okay, so... It's um almost a board clear. I suppose... Yeah, I suppose what you do is just make a 3-1 at the end. You make a 3-1 Totem Golem at the end. So you backstab the uh, the uh -huh. uh, Whirling Zapomatic fan and then SI the uh, the Totem Golem. Even though it provides a good trade for your opponent, you're not too sad having your opponent trade into you, especially with the limited card draw that the uh, Shaman has. Well, the other option is to keep the backstab here. I think that's also a viable option. Right, yeah. Just, uh, yeah, just go with that and then use the SI just straight up. But yeah, it looks like he goes for um, the play I thought of in the first place. Uh, yeah, definitely could have saved the backstab as well. I definitely agree with you. Um, what did the backstab accomplish there? It basically dealt two damage to the, um, totem, the golem. totem golem. Right, right. Yeah, so maybe it would have been better to not use it. Um, so while I mentioned him, not what Fallover was looking for. Probably wanted a Manatai totem right there. Uh, it's it's still kind of alright from his perspective because he gets the lava shock the the three oh, three right 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 so that's that's pretty decent and uh, yeah his opponent's gonna need some sort of AOE to clear though we do see that he does have that in hand speaking of Jay Shaw yeah um, just uh, another scenario like like we mentioned backstab didn't really accomplish anything here because the most likely play for Jay Shaw in the next turn is just to clear with the deadly poison. And backstab is probably one of your most important tools in the deck. Ooh. Oh, um, <laughs> this is the funny thing about rogue, right? You always want that dagger there, just so you can make huge plays like this. Not having that two mana is really big. Uh, would have been pretty huge to be able to just clear this board and get two one ones out of it and develop the violet teacher. Um, he could get really greedy and just play the violet teacher uh, dagger deadly poison, but um, I mean, I guess. I mean, Jaytaw's in a pretty commanding lead. I don't know if he realizes it, but he's in a pretty commanding lead uh, because of, obviously, the Urshock, excuse me, in uh, Fualover's hand. So almost no matter what he does, it should be okay. The The biggest worry, I think, is that um, maybe his opponent develops something next turn that he can't deal with, but that's pretty unlikely. Yeah, typically as the aggro shaman, you really want a lot of minions, um, and that's exactly what Fualover got. But unfortunately... He just hasn't gotten the burst to go along with that. He hasn't gotten the card draw either. And those are two of the things that he he's kind of needed over the past few turns. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Doomhammer is one of the best things he could have gotten here, though. It needs to start getting that damage in. Uh, just a random minion might not have been the best. 
I'm going to be dealing with this Violet Teacher, but there's no more Healbots in Jayshaw's deck, if I remember correctly. So uh, maybe this Doomhammer will help him win in the end. I believe he's used one Rockbiter, is that correct? Uh, yeah, he definitely used at least one Rockbiter. Uh, I don't believe he's used another one. Uh, I'm looking at this deck right now from Jayshaw, and yeah, only one Earthering Farseer left. Right, so yeah, Jayshaw is going to be running out of uh, healing. However, he does have plenty of damage as we look um, at the two Tinkers in hand. Follow, we're likely going to be ignoring this Violet Teacher from now on. Picks up the Lightning Bolt, which is extra damage, which is nice. Um, I imagine he's not too sad about that. Just uh, base, just wants you know damage spells from here on out. Picking up a Lava Burst here, uh, Crackle there would be really nice to help him finish out the game before Jayshaw can. Yeah, there is the option to Earth Shock this Violet Teacher, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. There are Rogue decks which run the um, which run the Sludge Belcher, so you kind of want to Earth Shock that. Um, also, oh, that's quite interesting. Also, uh, yeah, I'm not sh I'm not sure if that was okay. Um, the other problem is if you Earth Shock the Vibe Teacher, then you guarantee the um, Tinker Sharp Soda Oil on the Vibe Teacher. So that Earth Shocking the Vibe Teacher could actually be bad for you. All right, as you can see on the screen there, the one of Rock Biter left in the deck will be lethal for Fu Oliver, and uh, picks up a Lava Burst. Is that lethal? I think that is exactly lethal, even without the spell power totem. So that's going to be it. Fu Oliver, even though he got thwarted in his or his board got thwarted, picked up the Doomhammer on time, able to get that damage in, and the aggressive Shaman is going to take an unfavorable matchup against the Rogue. And this series is tied one game to one. Yeah, I want to say that's a really strange game that we just saw. Um, the aggro Shaman kind of went for more of a board control style of play. And it worked out for him in the end, but I've just never seen a Shaman quite trade like that, especially against the Rogue. Yeah, I mean, basically what he was thinking about is that his hand didn't have too much burst in it. H had he had the burst in his hand, he might have started pushing for the face. But uh, he started realizing that he needed his minions to go a long way. And with an all-minion hand, he figured that if you get some favorable trades, he can set up for a board where his future minions can survive onto the board. And from there, he can push for more damage. Unfortunately, he got Blade Flurry. But fortunately for him, after that, d immediately picks up the Doom Hammer to finish off the game. So in the end, going uh, works out for him. It's going to be now the face hunter of Fu Oliver and going to be the combo droid of Jay Shaw. Right, so the one key card from Jay Shaw in his deck is the one Kazan Mystic that we saw earlier. Kind of an interesting tech choice to bring that. Uh, unfortunately for him, he only is running one Darnassus Aspirant, so it's kind of like a double edged sword there. Um, both of those cards are really great against the hunter. But um, he just subs out one great card against Hunter against another one. So uh, I wonder why that is. Because it, it seems like the uh, Kazab Mystic really fulfills a lot of the same purposes as the Darnassus Aspirant. Against Mage, it's really good against Mirror Entity. So is Darnassus Aspirant. Against Hunter, um, both those cards are just really good against Hunter in general. Because Darnassus deals with the early game. Meanwhile, Kazan is really good in the mid game. Right. Um... Kazan obviously can steal something like the Explosive Trap, but if you're talking about Freezing Trap, you're perfectly fine with getting your Darnassus frozen back. You basically just get a Wild Growth in that situation. So, uh, yeah, you're right. I, I typically tend to want the Double Darnassus rather than having Kazan, if those are my options, but a lot of Chinese players want uh, the opposite there. Looks like uh, Jaysha had the opportunity to silence or kill. Went with the kill. Definitely makes sense in that situation because uh, the Explosive Trap represents two damage while the uh, Mad Scientist represents three. Uh, pretty annoying Misha coming up here. Uh, Going to be pretty annoying for Jayshot to deal with. Uh, doesn't... Um, I mean, he can kind of guess that this is uh, Face Hunter right now because of the Glaive Zuka, at least. But uh, not 100% quite yet. Sometimes you see Glaive Zuka run in hybrid or mid-range Hunters. Right, so... Uh, it's... I mean, Jayshaw didn't really have much of a choice whether to use the Keeper or not the previous turn, but I think he feels more comfortable with using the Keeper because he saw the Glaive Zuka. He knows, okay, it's less likely to be mid-range Hunter, so I don't really need to save this Keeper of the Grove for Sahana, Savannah High Main later on. Yeah, definitely. Um, and really, there's nothing for him to do that turn, so I, I support that play. Uh, for all of our... Um... This turn, I imagine he's just going to ignore this board. No reason to trade into this Keeper. Well, there's a slight reason, just to give a bad trade onto, uh, or for the uh, 
uh, Pile of Shredder, but I mean, he's pushing a lot of damage right now, and I believe this is the correct play. j -Shot does have those two heals in hand, but they cost a lot. Uh, it's a lot of lost tempo to get those on the board. Right. Um, yeah. So, j -Shot had the option to just go for Azure Drake last turn, but uh, like you mentioned, he's just going for more of a strong play in order to deal with these minions. Oh, and it really pays off in spades because he gets... <laughs> He gets cheap, that Frost right? Wolf grunt, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, so Jaysha, somewhat happy with that. Obviously, he can't attack the face, or else that guy goes away. But, um, yeah, gonna be in a reasonable spot. I Looks like he's gonna be favoring hero powering here, uh, just so that he can get the extra health, kind of like a half warrior. But um, from Fulver's perspective, he doesn't really have much to do. Uh, he can start... I mean, he can Owl, which doesn't really do much. He can Knife Juggler Owl. Uh, it could be just be a, a Hero Power Pass. Could it even be a Hero Power uh, Kill Command Face? Maybe an Owl Kill Command Face? It seems a little inefficient because um, if you're playing the Owl and Kill Command, you're basically trading your Hero Power for yeah. two extra damage on the Kill Command. Yeah, the, the reasoning behind, obviously, is would be a mana consideration, right? You can't use all your mana in the uh, the following turns if you hear, if you weave in hero power every single time. But uh, it looks like he's going for... I mean, even though it costs less for the uh, quick shot, he's thinking that maybe he can sneak in uh, the Kill Command and the hero power in a future turn uh, with that Iron Break Owl. So maximizing damage over the long run. So oh, Jayshaw, interesting. Sorry? Not not even proccing the explosive trap here, so... Um, yeah, that 2-2 that Frostwolf Grunt is pretty important, honestly, in uh, keeping Jayshaw alive. So uh, I think he's perfectly fine with waiting, especially with the second uh, Ancient of Lore in hand. Another yeah, quick shot going to be coming out of Jay Fuelver, sorry. I wonder if he's done the math already on Force of Nature Savage Roar on 9. So basically it'll be he'll have two five fives. Um So that will be an addition of... 14 damage, so so the combo will be 28 damage on turn, um, on turn nine. But yeah. then there's the, the the other ancient of lore, so it'll be way over a kill. Yeah, so it would be 35 damage. Um, that could be what he's looking for, and it seems like a solid play. There's nothing really uh, for follow Oliver to uh, do to counteract that other than killing him. And it's pretty hard to kill him, kill Jay Shaw from 16 behind a taunt. So. Yeah, I would say that's a pretty solid play. He even gets to uh, fill up <laughs> or to get rid of one of the, the cards in his board. Yeah, We see there that Vuelver really wants to unleash the Hounds, does not get it. And um, that's probably going it, to be it. I don't think Vuelver can do anything. He can kill Command to clear, but then he's never going to win the game, I don't believe. Yeah, basically, he has to kill Command, one of the Ancients of Lore, in order to survive. Let's see if he sees it or if he's just going to go for face. Nope, it's face instead. Yep, and that's going to be it. Uh, pretty sure Jay Shaw is going to spot this because it seems to be his game plan the entire time. He even gets the innervate just in case. And, uh... No, you can't... Oh, it doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, you might as well since, like, yeah. Alright. So, that's going to be it. It's going to be 35 damage with the combo. 36 if you include hero power. And Jay Shaw is going to take a two games to one lead in this best of five. Really important for him. Uh, if he's able to win this, he goes to two games uh, or two series one and zero lost, which would help immensely in securing a spot in the final eight. Yeah, and he just has his rogue left um, in order to deal with Fulver's, uh secret paladin and Fate Hunter. And I think I'm liking those chances. Um, Jay Shaw's rogue basically is to kind of tech to deal with Secret Paladin with the one big game hunter. We saw a lot of rogue players at BlizzCon effectively tech rogue in order to exactly deal with Secret Paladin. For example, Purple played rogue, Oskaka played rogue, and Hotform played rogue. So two of the uh, only players who played rogue met in the finals of BlizzCon. So it seems to be a very effective strategy. Not only that, but uh, a lot of players typically say that Fate Hunter is favored over Rogue, but I think it's much closer than what the average player thinks. And the stats that I collected before TGT, it was actually closer to 50%, about eight wins apiece. Yeah. Um, and that, that had a lot to do with a lot of players kind of teching for the matchup at the time because Rogue was so strong. Um, you had a lot of players like Dog actually teching in double heal bot 
into Oil Row just to deal with that kind of matchup. Yeah, definitely. And uh, you, these days you see at least one heal bot. Yesterday I think we saw a Sludge Welter instead of a heal bot, but typically, I mean, you kind of have to have the heal bot to survive, even if you're playing kind of mid range versus mid range. Like, say you're placing, playing against a Druid, you kind of need that healing to not forever be in combo range. Um, so yeah, it definitely helps a lot in this matchup. And uh, once you get the heal bot, you can race after that pretty easily. Uh, even if you don't get the heal bot, you can potentially race in some situations. So uh, it's a it's a deck that can do reasonably well against the face hunter, just not always. Yeah, oh. kind of a sad turn here. <laughs> well, I mean, it's pretty effective sap if you consider uh, what else Fuelver has in this deck. Nothing else really that you want to sap. I mean, sometimes you even see the uh, uh, Lepernome getting sapped just so that the damage doesn't guaranteed get off. Yeah, sap just not really a good card in the matchup at all. Uh, I think the best sap would probably be Misha. But other than that, I think Mad Scientist is probably your best bet. Right. So it looks like Jaysha is going to go ahead and kill this because if he doesn't, it's going to keep hitting me in the face. Uh, does set up for next couple turns since he does have that... Um, Battle Teacher and the Azure Drake. Going to be wanting to pick up some preps to be able to use those fans and knives. Uh, Animal Companion is a Misha again. Pretty good. Um, Huffer probably would have been a bit better in this situation. We know that j -Shot does not have uh, the backstab. Yeah. Unfortunately here, uh, if he plays Violet Teacher, it's kind of more of a liability than, um, than a boon for him to summon a lot of 1-1s because there's always the Unleash the Hound in Fulliver's deck. Yeah, but it's not something you, that you keep in the opening hand of the Face Hunter. And uh, in the meantime, you know, it's, it's a pretty solid body. So I think he's fine playing that out over something like the Earthen Ring Forest here. And uh, Fulver this turn, he can just get rid of that uh, Valor Teacher right away and still have mana left for that Leopard Gnome. Um, or he can just turn up the pressure. Uh, actually, the, the uh, Glaive Zuka is pretty decent at clearing off the Valor Teacher if he doesn't want to start smorking it yet. Uh, because obviously you don't want to be running your face into a 4-1 Misha. There is the fan, but that would use most of his turn. Uh, I'm not sure, like, if he trades into the Vi Teacher, I'd, I'd just like going into the face a bit more, because, right, right. like we said, I don't think the Vi Teacher is actually worth that much. The 1-1s, one uh, from Jay Shaw's perspective, they're kind of more of a detriment. We know, of course, that Fulliver doesn't have Unleash the Hounds, but if Fulliver does trade into Vi Teacher, I think it, it signals to Jay Shaw that he doesn't have Unleash the Hounds, and then Jay Shaw can actually just play around that or play into Unleash the Hounds, basically. Yeah, good calculated risk here by Fulliver. Um, buffing up the Misha, but then going to face instead of clearing the Vi Teacher. Uh, basically, I mean, the Rogue is never really going to keep uh, Eviscerate in this matchup. It's just way too clunky, as strange as that sounds. And so, pretty difficult to get rid of uh, the Misha outside of that. Um, he can use his face, but I'm sure Fulliver is pretty happy to uh, have the Rogue throw his face into a 5-3 Misha. Uh, either way, this just wow. feels so bad. Ouch. <laughs> Three. That hurts so much. Uh, that feels so bad for Jay Shaw. So yeah, has, uses the fan to just to be able to get a 1-1 one -one and trade his Violet Teacher in... And uh, even just going to pass, not even going to, you know, attack and refill his dagger. A um, lot of damage onto Jay Sha, uh so far. Fuelver immediately hero powers, which, um, I don't know. I mean, it kind of gives your opponent uh, information, right? Like, you you don't have a, a good, you know, two minions to play that are three and two costs or something like that. But, um, I don't know. Maybe it doesn't matter in the end. It's, once again, Jay Shaw's very clunky hand is kind of hurting him here. He can play the Lothab, probably survive a few turns, and then follow that with the Earthering Farseer, but it doesn't seem like he really has much of a plan going on to the next few turns. Uh, there is the prep Tinker Sharp Sword Oil, but uh, that still doesn't seem nearly enough, especially with uh, the kind of hand that Fulliver has. Explosive Trap, Unleash the Hounds, and the the main part is Kill Command. Well, at the very least, that Lothab was very effective. His entire hand was spells other than the Iron Breakout, which you really don't want to be uh, playing. That is a very huge draw, though, right now. Um, do you... I guess you can't really go for it. Uh, I mean, you could... What I, I guess what, what I'm talking about is the Dagger Prep Tinkers Tinkers, but then you most likely die. 
Um, we can see that he's guaranteed dead if he does go for that play. He might go for the Prep Tinker's uh, Farseer and hope that the damage is enough. But uh, would you would you go for the Tinker's here or the Farseer? Looks like he's going to go for the Farseer. Uh, does this set up lethal either way, though? Uh, 12, 15. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so this probably is the better play. So what can Follower do here? Um, he has the Kill Command, which is 5, and then the Hero Power, which is 2, obviously. So that's 7. Doesn't really have any more damage than that. Um, uh, Huffer would be lethal, but I think that's a little bit too risky for him, potentially. Um, although I think you can, you can possibly Huffer, and then if it doesn't work out, you can try Iron Ar Beaking Owling the Lotheb. Yeah, we do see that the Iron Beak Owl would not save him, though, because Jayshot can go Fan and Knives into uh, Tinkers. So, Follower is kind of hovering over his Unleash the Hound, so maybe uh, make the minions vulnerable to Explosive Trap and then play that. But, but Well, the other option... The thing is, if you don't get Huffer, there's a 50% chance to get Misha, so only Leoc would be really bad in that scenario. Right, right, right. So, yeah, maybe that would have been the better choice there. Looks like he's just going to go for... Um, Okay, he's gonna owl the Lothab. Is there still lethal here? He has uh, 7 plus 8, 15. Yeah, he has lethal. With the. Um, he has to run in the forest here so that it dies first, but uh, he has guaranteed lethal because he gets right. 7 from the dagger and 8 on Lothab. Oh, he has, to, he has to run the forest here first, yeah. Right, he sees it, he sees it. <laughs> okay. Like, usually we say that players who play Rogue are very experienced Rogue players um, because it's such like a niche deck, but in this format, it, they might not play a lot of Rogue. They're just forced to play a Rogue because it's just the nature of this format. But Jaysaw does play correctly, and he goes up to a 2-0 match score, which almost guarantees him to go to the next round. Yeah, very pretty well played by Jaysaw overall there. Uh, just to... Update you guys, Jayshaw did win 3-2 against Surrender earlier, and 3-1 there, so really good position. It would take a lot for him to lose. He'd, he'd have to start out by losing 0-3, and, and then from there have some crazy stuff happen with the rest of the group. So most likely Jayshaw is one of our qualifiers uh, for the next round. And uh, the next match we will see if Jayshaw can cement his place in the top 8 as he goes against Eloise. Yeah, so uh, what's our next match for today? Yeah, Jayshaw versus Eloise. Okay, so Jayshaw versus Eloise, it's kind of a battle of the uh, the Chinese players and definitely one that I think Eloise will want to win because if she does, I think it almost guarantees her a spot in the uh, in the next round. Although Surrender versus Fall of Her is our final match of the day, so we could even be looking at a possible three-way tie for second place, and then we're just going to have to go in the match differential, or the game differential, rather. Yeah, up to this point, everything is still possible. There's, there, could, there could be a three-way tie at 2-1, there could be a three-way tie at 1-2, and uh, obviously that leaves room for a 3-0 oh, and an 0-3 oh, uh, for either Jaysha or Fall of Her. But uh, yeah, good job by Jayshaw so far. We will see Eloise versus Jayshaw in the next match, so don't go away. You don't want to miss that.